From juicing to crystals to collagen wellness products have exploded into a $4.4 trillion industry. And they often use seductive marketing to target people just looking to live a healthier life. In her new book, journalist Arena Raphael takes a look at how the industry can sell overcomplicated and unnecessary solutions to very real problems. It's called The Gospel of Wellness, Gyms, Gurus, Goop, and the False Promise of Self-Care. Rena joins us live. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Now, I think you mentioned that you were a sucker for some of these things. Uh, why were you so susceptible and what was the dumbest thing you got wrapped up in? <laughs> yes, I have a beauty cabinet filled to the brim with uh, <laughs> CBD, capsules, pills, you name it. Um, yeah, I mean, this industry sold solutions. If you're too tired, if you don't have enough energy, if you feel sluggish, if you feel like you are not pretty enough, whatever it is, somehow this industry has evolved into a lot of rituals and a lot of products that have very little or any scientific evidence. And that's very different from real wellness. And what I tried to do in this book was understand why are women so fixated on wellness in the last decade, more so than ever before, and also what is really going to help us and what's being sold to us? What's no more than snake oil? Well, yeah, why, why is it seemingly more so women, not exclusively, but and why does it seem to be way on in this dramatic rise? Well, if you're to believe the national surveys, women are more stressed than men. They also uh, usually interact more with the medical industry, starting from a young age. Uh, they usually have more household responsibilities uh, or feed the children more. So they uh, obviously are more involved in some of these sectors, which wellness is sort of sometimes preying on. Um, and again, it tells them everything they want. So you'll sort of see that lately in the last few years, diet culture seeped its way into wellness, uh, productivity pressure. And a lot of these companies uh, hired people from the diet, beauty, even alcohol industries, and they kind of took those manipulative tactics and suddenly applied it to health. Um, wellness is a real pursuit. Again, real wellness, which is nutrition, fitness, stress management is real, and it's a worthy mm. pursuit. But how do we make sure we don't get suckered in? Yeah, so those, uh, those marketing red flags that have been consistent for decades what are they? What do advertisers say or do or avoid saying that makes it somewhat kosher and convince people that it works? Uh, well, number one, they use very manipulative emotional language. So they use a lot of fear mongering. For example, if you don't buy organic snacks for your kids, you know, your whole family's in danger, uh, stuff like that, or how something will transport you to a pure era. They use the word natural when, you know, for example, there, there's natural beauty movement now, but there are no lipstick trees. There's no <laughs> bottle of shampoo you can take off. Of what does that even mean? Right. Um, so that's one thing. I, I'd also say demand evidence. If someone makes a striking claim, uh, they have to back it up. Um, and what you're seeing now is a lot of science washing. So you'll see a lot of brands use scientific jargon and people are easily you know, taken in by that. They say, oh, they, well, there's a clinical, you know, oh, it's clinically tested. Well, what does that exactly mean? Yeah. Does that mean it's effective? So the book goes into, because I was a wellness industry reporter for so many years, goes into all the ways that um, these companies might be tricking us or may not, yeah. be, or may not be delivering the nuance of the yeah. issue. So I, I think that some people have the perception that there's some agency like the Food and Drug Administration that protects consumers from people making what sound like false or at least exaggerated claims. Is that not true? To some degree, but let's look at uh, supplements, for, ex for example. Um, it's illegal to sell supplements that are unsafe that might harm you, but that doesn't mean the supplement is necessarily effective. It doesn't mean it's going to do what it say it does. And so in that sense, you might be wasting your money, you might be wasting time, and it might be standing in the way of real therapeutic treatments that can help you. Let me ask you in closing about a specific company, the, the Gwyneth Paltrow Goop, and I, I joke about it, I really don't know that much about it, but there was something about a jade egg that you're supposed to put places where jade eggs probably shouldn't go. What do you make of that company? Uh, that company is, number one, really associating health and wellness with an aspirational lifestyle. And again, they're really capitalizing on women's hopes, fears, and vulnerabilities. Unfortunately, a lot of their products and treatments do not have any scientific evidence behind them, like the jade egg that, as you said, is put in places that we won't talk about on morning television. <laughs> 
Thank you for setting us straight, Rena. Uh, the book is called The Gospel of Wellness, Jim's Guru's Goop and the False Promise of Self-Care. For more, you can follow her on social media. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you.